Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ryan with Esco Tech, and I'm back with another video with my Optiplex 3010 upgrade. Last video I did the comparison between the Xeon and the i7, so if you haven't checked that out, be sure to go take a look. In this video, I want to test to see if a premium RAM upgrade is worth it for a Dell Optiplex build. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at this regular ass PNY RAM and compare it to this set of Corsair Dominator Platinum. Both sets are 2x8 gig sticks for a 16 gigabyte total of DDR3 1600 MHz. And spoiler alert, the premium RAM is not worth it. Keep watching if you want to see my testing and see why I came to that conclusion. Taking a quick look at the specs of each set of sticks, the PNY is has a timing of 11, 11, 11, 28. Um, otherwise, all specs are the same as the Dominator Platinum, which just has faster CAS latency of 999.24. Otherwise, I chose two 8-gig sticks to keep things fair, and they're both at 1600 megahertz to get a direct comparison. I am using the exact same testing methodology as my last video when I compared the Xeon to the i7. I will run Cinebench R20, All Benchmark Catzilla, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Unigen Superposition, 3D Mark Time Spy, all in a row. I'll reboot and get a total of three runs of each benchmark. Hopefully, the Average of three runs will eliminate any statistical anomalies and give us the best results. So the full system specs of this Optiplex 3010 are a Core i7-3770. I left that in since it had a little bit better performance than the Xeon I used in the last video. 16 gigs of the DDR3, which I'll switch out uh, between the PNY and the Dominator Platinum. A 250 gigabyte Samsung 850 EVO SSD and a Zotac GTX 970 for our GPU. That should cover all the pertinent background info. Let's get straight to the results. Our first test is Cinebench R20. This is a processor benchmark. I've expected it to be a little more RAM intensive than some of the other gaming benchmarks I'm running, but you can see that the PNY and Corsair score almost identical. The PNY is one point faster, which is statistically insignificant. Which leads us to our first 3D benchmark. If you've watched my channel, you know that I like the All Benchmark Catzilla benchmark. And in this, it scores almost identical again. The PNY ends up being slightly faster again, which you'll see is a common theme here. I will try to offer an explanation, or at least a hypothesis, to why the PNY scored faster in all these benchmarks. And then next, taking a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Once again, we have a slight advantage for the PNY RAM. And this is only 2 FPS, but this is actually the benchmark that showed the biggest difference and the biggest advantage to the PNY RAM. And moving on to Unigen's Superposition benchmark, we see again a similar result with the PNY RAM being slightly faster, but again not an amount to be noticeable in the real world. And finally, moving to our last benchmark, we have 3D Mark's Time Spy, where the PNY RAM scored 10 points higher than the Corsair RAM. Again, a very small amount, but once again, an advantage to the PNY. And I can't necessarily explain why the PNY RAM ended up being faster in every case, but I have two hypotheses as to why there wasn't much difference between the RAM in the first place. You can see by looking at the benchmark scores, our average difference on all of them is less than 1% except for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which had a 4% advantage to the PNY. And the reason, the first reason anyway, that I think that they're, we're not seeing any advantage from the Corsair Dominator Platinum and its faster timings is that uh, these benchmarks just aren't RAM intensive enough to have RAM latency play a major role in the overall performance of the entire system. My second theory is that the Dell chipset just can't take advantage of the lower latency and faster timings of the Dominator Platinum, and that's why we don't see any difference in performance. If anybody has any other ideas as to why the Dominator Platinum didn't show a performance increase in this system, go ahead and leave it in the comments. We can always start a discussion down there. I'm curious as to what everybody else might think. I definitely could have done some more RAM-intensive benchmarks and testing, but... In most cases, you're looking to put a budget Optiplex system together, and if you're considering going for premium RAM, save your money and spend it on something else. 
And by saying that, I mean you'll be better served to buy normal RAM and, and allocate the money that you would spend on the premium RAM towards a CPU, GPU, or maybe even a bigger SSD. So that's going to do it for this video. Again, if you guys have any theories as to why the better RAM didn't really make a difference, leave them below. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.